You know, as a builder, I need to know a little bit about all the trades that are on my job site. I don't necessarily have to be a master in each one of them, but I should know enough to make wise decisions on my owner's behalf. On the build show today, we're gonna to take a deep dive into plumbing to see what we can learn. Now, we've done a bunch of plumbing videos before. Here's some old pipes from past videos. But today, specifically, we're gonna focus on the copper press system. We're gonna do some testing on it and see what we can learn. Today's video is sponsored by supplyhouse.com. Let's get going. All right, so first off, what are we talking about today? We're talking about these fittings right here. This is a copper fitting that doesn't require the normal sweating. It's actually a press on fitting. A little bit similar to shark bite fittings in some respects because they've got a gasket in there that's gonna do some of the sealing for us. But unlike the shark bites, these actually get pressed on with tons of force. We're gonna show you that in a minute. Now on today's test, we're gonna put different fittings on different types of copper so we can see if there's any difference. Now what are the copper types we're gonna use? We're gonna use type M, which is the red copper, the thinner wall copper, 0 0.028 inch wall thickness. This is typically what you're gonna use on residential projects. And then the blue is a little thicker. It's 0 0.040 inch wall thickness. Both of these are gonna have three quarter inch diameter insides, but the blue is gonna be a little thicker because of that wall thickness. I'm curious if that'll make a difference when we start freezing these fittings. Now let me show you how these fittings work. As I mentioned, these fittings don't need any heat. There's no solder involved on these. It's a pressed on fitting, so they're gonna work quite a bit faster, and of course time is money. Let me start with this fitting. This is made by Viga, the German guys, and you're gonna use this Milwaukee system to press them on. This is uh, the M12 Force Logic system, available at uh, supplyhouse.com, about 1800 bucks for the full kit to do half, three quarter, or one inch copper. And check out how easy this is. We're just gonna open the jaws like this. This is the three quarter head in my little machine right here. And then once, that in, once that's in, we're gonna press this button and it's gonna force it down. So here you go. Nothing to it. Now once it's done, you have to release the jaws. It can be a little bit, a little bit sticky, but there you go, check it out. Tons of force, I'm not sure how many tons, but it must be several tons of force to actually put that fitting on because when you look at it, you can actually see the crimp marks and where that crimp mark is, there's a little bit of a divot on the pipe right there. What a huge advantage compared to a traditional copper in that there's no hot work, there's no flames, there's no fire danger, or if you're working on some commercial jobs, you actually have to have a permit to do hot work. Can't always do that when you want to. Okay, so here's the setup, guys. First off, we're gonna test standard copper, both L and M with sweat on fittings. Now I put a gate valve on these, a hose bib basically, so that I could make sure I filled these all the way to the top so there was no air bubbles on here. Next, I've got a JW import press fitting also available at supplyhouse.com. And again, I've got it in type L and type M, so we can see if there's any difference on wall thickness. The next pair is Viga. This is the brand name, the, the more expensive of the two. And again, I've got it in the thicker and the thinner wall. And then for fun, I put some shark bites on there. So this is the thick and the thin wall with a shark bite. And it's kind of a control. Now we've done these before, but I'm curious to see how these do versus copper. I've got Upinor PEX. You've seen us do that before. That, that's gonna go on with this expansion tool right here. And then I've got Viga's flavor of PEX, which is gonna go on with a crimp tool and a crimp ring like this. I built a lot of houses with these two systems, so we'll see how these do on the freezer test. Next up, we're gonna put water in each one of these, close the valve off, make sure there's no air in there, tap them a couple of times, make sure they're totally filled. Then we're gonna lay them in an ice cream freezer that I actually bought specifically for this test. So I wanted to be able to see through the window and put a long time lapse on them. And as the time lapse goes here in a minute, keep your eye out on the intersection between the pipe and the fitting because I'm gonna have a nice line of Sharpie there so that if that fitting is moving at all, you're gonna see it based on that Sharpie mark on there. Let's fill all these up, let's drop them in the freezer and I'll come back tomorrow and let's check the results.
Oh man, I love these tests, so fascinating. So if you look at the freezer, some of these pipes actually dented the inside of the freezer. They had so much force, I actually had to push or pull to get them out of there. That was pretty cool. Now I set them up on some paper towels and we let a little time-lapse camera go so we could see the blood. But what's interesting about that is seeing where they bled and actually I thought the PEX was unaffected, but no, we'll get to that in a second. First off, let's look at the copper. Um, with the traditional sweat fittings. Now the thinner, the Type M, this is the red copper. Look at that blowout, holy cow. In fact, my accountant was working late that night and texted Joey, our videographer, and said, it sounded like a gunshot, is everything okay? When that thing blew out, it blew out immediately and it made a really loud bang. She was scared actually. Now on the Type L, which is the blue, the thicker wall, Oop, I'm spilling a little bit here. You can see it still split, but I'm assuming that it split later. We'll have to check the footage on that to verify that this, this took a little bit longer to split because of the thicker wall. I'm thinking that maybe in the footage, you, we'll have to look back, but that you might even see it expand a little bit before eventually it popped out and that pimple popped. All right, now let's look at the press fittings. That was really the point of this video. I was curious to see how these press fittings did and so interesting, all four of them, didn't matter if it was thick or thin wall, they all popped out and they all popped out on the same end. I have no idea why, but check that out. All four of those fittings right here, boom. They all popped off that end. You can see the Sharpie mark, like I mentioned, that's the end of, the, uh, of where those fittings used to be. And we're talking about pushing off a footing or fitting of, what is that dimension? It's like inch, it's about an inch. They go in about an inch, but all those caps in the freezer were actually, I don't know, another inch, inch and a half. So really that ice pushed them maybe two inches. Holy cow, that's amazing. But what's wild is that the hose bib side and all four of those, those didn't move at all. The black line is right where I put it. I don't know what to make of that. I, I thought we'd maybe see a difference between the thick and the thin wall, we didn't. Shark bites, we saw these before. They fail miserably on this test, as always. The interesting thing about this one is that you can see the nails from the claws of the shark bite as if the teeth were scratching the chalkboard as they popped off the end. But on this fitting, it didn't happen. I don't get it. They dug in and the plastic actually broke, which is interesting that this fitting is really mainly relying on plastic, not metal, to, uh, to keep its strength. Now on the uh, PEX, kind of my control, we got two flavors here. We've got the Vega PEX, which is the crimp fitting, which I actually thought did fine, but we've got a little puddle of blood here. Let's see if we can see where that fitting broke. I don't see anything that's cracked on the brass, but somehow we've got some water that came through. I see one little droplet right there that's sticking out. I wonder if I've got a small little crack in the brass right there. That one did break, but our other one here, which is the, oh, oh, I see a little red actually. I didn't see that on the towel until I picked that up. That's interesting. There's actually a little bit of red there. So maybe something cracked on there. Maybe that's just a little bit of incident of water. So I thought maybe the Upinor was perfect. Hard to say, but it certainly fared better than these guys that bled all over. I'm not sure what takeaways we can take from this that are really specific to our job site. Maybe you might want to consider the thicker wall uh, copper if you're plumbing a house compared to the thinner wall. But at the same time, there's a huge cost difference on those. And these fittings did fail on the pipe themselves, not the fitting. Pretty wild, guys. I, I like this copper press system. I think this is a good thing for our industry. And I'm not sure that this test tells you that you shouldn't use it. I think it's just interesting to, to think about it. So, what takeaways could we take from this? Well, number one, I would say, you know, if you're building a cabin that maybe is not gonna be conditioned all year round, or maybe you, you might be prone to some power outages, you might wanna consider a system that's a little more resilient compared to some of these copper systems or these press fittings that are a little less resilient. Other than that, though, I think this test is really more for fun and interest. Of course, you wanna use your frost-free hose bibs and be sure to use those in all climate zones, right? I've made a bunch of videos on those. Check, go check those out, including some of the cool ones from Aquar that look really sleek. 
But these were intended to mimic as if we had no frost free. That hose bib was just going straight outside. Guys, big thanks to SupplyHouse.com for sponsoring today's video. All the parts and pieces, including the tools we use, came from SupplyHouse.com. They're great to work with. Fast shipping, great communication. You actually talk to real people over there. And if you check out their website, ton of great options there for all kinds of different things that you're going to use uh, on your job site. So go check those guys out. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, comment below if you think I missed something or if you see another test or another type of fitting that I should try. I'm curious to know what you thought of this test. I'll try and reply to as many of those comments as possible. So hit that comment below. And if you like this video and you want to see more that's plumbing related, hit that thumbs up button. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.